All right. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome for this uh, talk on linear quadratic uh, uh, minifield type games uh, in presence of uh, three ingredients here. Uh, the first one is about common noise. This is uh, the global uncertainty uh, to affect the, the dynamics. Uh, the second ingredient is about jump diffusion processors. So we'll include in particular jump terms that are very important in the modeling aspect to capture realistic behavior and uh, switching uh, dynamics as one. Well. Regime switching so you can move from one dynamical system into another dynamical system and so on. So this is a joint work with uh, Professor uh, Terry Duncan from the University of Kansas and uh, we came up about this idea uh, uh, from our last meeting uh, in August 2017 uh, at ICOM UCLA uh, uh, and then we start uh, interacting and discussing about uh, variance reduction problems inspired from uh, from Markovich problems and uh, with more than one decision makers so uh, so the the agenda is uh, that first I I would like to to acknowledge my co-authors and and collaborators for this work it's a very uh, interesting work and they have been helping us in improving the scientific content as well as uh, the readability and the sites and, and so on. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for all of this. Uh, another uh, important uh, aspect is the financial research. So this is uh, uh, and this research is supported by both the US Air Force and, and the NSF. Um, so that being said, so the agenda is to introduce briefly uh, many field games and then move to the many field type games and then we'll introduce common noise there, jump division there, regime switching there. We focus not only on the non-cooperative games uh, as it is usually done in the literature but also the cooperative case the Nash bargaining case, the Pareto optimality case, and the the zero sum, zero sum uh, robustness cases. And the last part will be on games in the presence of uh, empathy structure, antipathy, self negation, self destroying, other regarding payoffs. So let's briefly introduce. Uh, what we mean by game in strategic form or in normal form. This is given by uh, three main ingredients. The first is the set of participants to the game, what we call agents, set of players, set of decision makers. Uh, the second is that for each of those participants, there is a set of choices, uh, depending on where they are and at which time and so on. And then each of the participants have a specific uh, preferences over those choices and we look at here in particular case where those preferences can be ordered somehow and then it can be represented by a certain function that we call objective function, payoff function, loss function and so on and so forth. Now if you put those three ingredients together you have a game that's a game in strategic form. Now, the information structure is important. It can be extensive form, sequential, and, uh, and, uh, and those class of games where the information comes sequentially and uh, the, the, uh, what we are going to call games in extensive form. And in this talk, we focus on the games in strategic form. Now, once you have the objective functions, let's denote them by Li of u1, u2, u3. And here, u1, u2, u3 are not control action, are not uh, utility functions, but are control actions. u1 is the control action of player 1, u2 the control action of player 2, and so on and so forth. Now, li is the objective that maps this action for 5, u1, u2, u, and u, and so on, to a real number. 
why a real number? Well, because we are going to optimize that function. So it's returning complex number. We, we need to convert it back and so on. So that's why we consider a real number. And, and the goal of objective I for these slides is to minimize this loss function. So this is typically uh, what we call Nash equilibrium, a situation where given the choices of the other players, player I cannot improve its payoff by unilateral deviation. Unilateral means that you, comp you change only this component, I, the i component, but i here, you can see, is a generalized Nash equilibrium in the sense that the choice of i is constrained by the choice of other edges. So u minus i is all the other uj's, j different than i. Now, this is what we call generalized Nash equilibrium. Of course, the concept uh, uh, was introduced uh, uh, in, in a long time ago, long time back, and I don't know the earliest reference on this, but, but this people usually mention the work by uh, Augustin Kurno, so this is in the 1838s, and uh, the, the, that's about the duopoly competition between two firms, and they are competing in terms of quantities. Now, if they compete in terms of price, instead of um, quantities, then you get the Bertrand equilibrium, uh, Borel, Emil Borel work is for mixed strategies, in particular the Colonial Bluto games, where there is no pure Nash equilibrium, and uh, you have to define the concept of mixed strategies there. Uh, Atwell is for Pareto optimality, Ross is for open loop differential game Nash equilibrium, and, 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 and so on and so forth. Uh, von Neumann is for zero sum matrix games, uh, Fisher for genetic and evolutionary dynamics, uh, population dynamics, uh, 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 Lord Walter and so on. Uh, Stackelberg is for is for uh, uh, linear follower games. Jeanville is for zero sum games. John Nash for finite uh, multi matrix games, existence of equilibria, uh, and of course cooperative games and so on. Uh, Isaacs for differential games, uh, uh, similar to the one introduced by Rose here, and Hamilton for evolutionary games. So you see the literature is huge, and, 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 and from those representatives, there are huge, huge applications of minfield, uh, uh, not yet, um, games in strategic form. So, uh, so, so from this model, that is based only on the, on the action profiles, picked by all the players. What we do now is to add state dependence. And this was already done by Lord Sharpley uh, in the 1953 on uh, state-based games, that is stochastic games, where the state changes from where you are to the next state according to some transition probability. It could be a kernel and so on. It could be continuous time, discrete time. His work although was discrete time, but people have generalized this to continuous time nowadays. Now, now, you take the previous model, set of players, set of choices, set of payoffs, and now include state. So the choice can be dependent on the state as well, and it can be, of course, dependent on the choice picked by the other agents as well. And the instant payoff of I now depends on time, state, and the choice of all the other players uh, uh, picked, uh, that they picked at time, at time t. Now, you look at long-term payoff instead of instant payoff, because instant payoff will be too myopic, as we'll see later, and long-term payoffs, they also define an objective function in the long run uh, for the duration of, uh, of the participation of that specific player, right? And, and, uh, and, uh, and this is what we call stochastic games. Now, one basic example. So here is the linear quadratic setup. The, the linear quadratic means that the state is linear in the state itself and in the control. So the drift here is linear in the state and in the control actions. The, the, the noises are all linear in the state and in the control actions. Now, the set of participants here is denoted by i, and we start from a initial state distribution, m nodes, and we run this dynamics. This is a standard Brown motion, and here the nt denotes a, a compensated uh, a Poisson processes. Or you could go uh, beyond the end. And, and consider a general uh, Levy measure uh, with a random measure for, 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 for the underlying Levy flight. Now, the agent I uh, optimizes this loss function. So it's going to, to pick up a, 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 a control action, uh, UI, such that this loss function in its expected 
value will be will be minimized and that's what we call a risk neutral uh, risk neutral Nash equilibrium and this consists to minimize the expected value of the loss ratio of course this problem depends on the information structure that is available to the player i and all the other players and so on open loop strategy is a strategy that is measurable with respect to time only and 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 the state does not appear here because you don't see it the, the information that is available is time and the starting point the feedback strategy uh, uh, is more more informational in the sense that you send the state as a time t to all the players knows this and observe and they pick an action uh, uh, based they could pick an action they could potentially pick an action uh, as a function of time state and, 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 and starting point as well now the closed loop action problem is when you pull the you plug this feedback inside and then they are responding to the strategies picked by the others and so on and then there's a closed loop system to be solved and uh, closed loop equilibrium strategies and uh, and uh, you could offer generalized to randomize you know, so that it will be delays without delays and, and so on and so forth so this is the basic lqg games uh, not L, the g not for gaussian but the g for games and 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 with diffusion process uh, here and then a jump process here so the question is how can we solve this problem and as the standard formulations extend to this these cases? So this is just a differential stochastic stochastic differential LQ game. Now the question is how to solve this type of problems, right? And and the one class of popular uh, method that people have been developing, and that goes back to Kondratiev in the sixties, is the Kondratiev method. Okay. Uh, or this is widely used to find open loop Nash equilibrium and so on. And then the dynamic programming approach uh, the, from the Bellman, uh, that we, in the games we call Bellman Shapley uh, because the, 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 the extension was done by Shapley, in particular in his, uh, in his uh, Shapley's uh, paper in Stochastic Games. And then uh, uh, you could approximate or get close form expression uh, with infinite Carroll's expansion. Of the processes in the stochastic case and uh, the, the deterministic uh, polynomial Carroll's expansion uh, with infinite sums, plug it and you replace the, uh, the cost and the state dynamics, and you might get uh, the simpler equations to, to derive. This is another method to solve, and, and of course, the method we are going to discuss here is the direct method. First, because you get the cost functional directly from the method, and you get the optimal strategy directly from the method uh, whenever you are able to, to, to solve it. Now, the last thing is, forget about the dynamics, forget about the loss function, we are going to learn all of this using deep learning. And we will not have time to discuss these uh, other methods today, but, uh, but those are existing methods in the literature, and here I'm going to, have to focus on the, uh, the direct method. Now, we have done some survey, and there is a motivation to study direct method. If you look at the answers, and of course, I'm not going to put numbers here because it's going to be controversial or not. Uh, what is important is that this number, uh, people who are solving this type of problems, they mostly use approximations, and this is the majority. Ma beyond, far beyond the majority. And the other classes that are unclear, and then a small fraction of People are doing stochastic maximum principle or just maximum principle, and to the even much smaller fraction of people are doing uh, uh, stochastic partial differential equations, and the year is going to be back or forward as you see there. Now, based on this type of thing, because we are developing theory so that people can use this in their concrete applications right so and if if they are not able to use that it doesn't mean that the theory is wrong no it does says that we need to help them so that they can compare with what they are doing and they could improve them so the idea is that we propose another method to explain how are they far to the optimality system 
all, all the optimality is useless and you are interested in specific criteria and then what is the optimality for that criteria as well. As you could see, they are going to be something different than those main two methods. And of course, if we use direct network plus approximation and look at how far we are to SMP or P well man, that could be an interesting approach as well. So uh, uh, learning techniques and approximation techniques and compare to those. So the, the idea is to develop a learning technique for those and one particular class of games where we could do is the linear quadratic setup because there we understand, as we'll see, we'll provide semi-explicit solutions to it. Therefore, numerical methods, direct method can be used in improving the numerical method to be closer to the systems that will be derived from those methods. Okay? So, direct method, what is it? Well, let's start with a basic example. That is main field free, there is no main field, and there is only one agent. And, and this agent has a cost function that is given here. There is a terminal cost and then a running cost, which is the, the control action square, vertically from 0 to t. Now, the state dynamics moves as follows. S dot, so the derivative, the time derivative of S is equal to U naught, and, and then uh, you start from a real number, let's say a positive number, whatever, any. Uh, then the fundamental integration formula, right, says that if I have a payoff of time and S, time because alpha of t, so if you, use, if you have a gas function or just alpha t, is at time t, you evaluate time 0, and then you integrate the derivative. But I have two components, time and s. So derivative with respect to time of the first component, and derivative with respect to, uh, to, to s, and then x dot, right? So if you evaluate this, and you make a difference between the cos and the alpha naught, you get this equation here. And if we want the loss function to be equal to this term, then the coefficient here should set up to should be set up to zero, and the the coefficient here. So this is quadratic. You are minimizing. Well, this is need to be zero, and the coefficient here to be zero. When you do that, you get that the cost functional is explicitly given here. The control action is explicitly given here, and and the the coefficient alpha is explicitly derived here. So everything here is explicit. So we could solve this equation without without Bellman equation, without maximum transfer control and maximum transfer, right? So this is the basic observation. Now, if I add a simple noise, simple problem motion with, with constant volatility term, uh, diffusion term, sigma, uh, uh, let's say non-zero for the moment. As sigma vanishes, we get the previous problem, but now, because of this term, the control becomes, the, 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 the state becomes stochastic and therefore the loss function is stochastic. So therefore, we need to map this random object into something deterministic. Well, not necessarily the risk network, but if the choice here is to look at the expected value, we can look at later on higher order terms, right? So we run the same equation as before, but now this fundamental integration formula becomes now a stochastic Ito formula. So we have Ito's formula, and, and we plug there, and we match with this. So the coefficient should be zero, and, and the thing is, the expected value of this term with the Brownian, because this is going to be Martingale. So the expected value of this is zero, and then the loss function becomes simply the previous loss function which was not noise free plus this there is a separation uh, in terms of the two problems and uh, the coefficient alpha does not change here because the control the, the deficient coefficient is uncontrolled and uh, state independent and the Riccati system is same as before but the state has changed because now it becomes noisy so this is the previous one, and then there is a new term that is added here, okay? And uh, again, the explicit expression of the, 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 the 
control problem uh, with one agent and, and, uh, and you don't need uh, PDEs to solve this problem. You don't need maximum principle or stochastic maximum principle to solve this problem. Now, uh, if you look at this, well, you are probably interested more on how can we do this all the time and uh, especially for nonlinear problems and so on. You can check and you'll find basic uh, uh, references for this, I think, uh, even for the risk, risk uh, sensitive case and, and even even for fractional problem machines and even for uh, spaces that are more involved, Hilbert space, uh, norms uh, space, and, and, and so on. And you can look at actually non-quadratic uh, problems as well in those references uh, and the early works by Professor Jenkins and, and his co-authors. And, uh, and uh, actually, uh, this is how we get inspiration. Maybe we could extend this to meaningful problems. And let's see how we can extend this. And the covariance reduction problem has been open for so many years, and here we'll be happy to share with you the recent results on this and how can we solve this, especially using the direct method. Uh, so, uh, so uh, the 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 generic setup will be now with more than one agent. Okay, so QI now is the coefficient. We are going to assume that is positive. Okay. Uh, we are going to minimize the loss function. Of, uh, it's not a really strong assumption, but we'll see that this plays an important role in the Riccati equations because we may, we may have finite blow up. Oh, that is escape in finite time if Q is negative. Right? It doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's not interesting. No, it could be actually interesting to look at this finite blow up time because if you are trying to, uh, you are trying to minimize and you can make it as high as you want. So uh, especially in the adversarial setting, finite time blow up is interesting and the risk sensitivity case and, and so on depending on the risk sensitivity index. Now uh, here, so QI is positive, QI at time t, uh, this is positive and RI at time t is positive, UI is the control action, so this is the energy part and this is the state quadratic part and the, the state dynamics now involve the choices of the other agents. So the game part appears because of this. If you have only UI here, then it's a, a basic distributed control problem, completely independently distributed, so you can decouple them. But since the sum of the control action for the other agents uh, appears here, I cannot decouple this because it doesn't know the choice picked by the other agents. And 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 and, and uh, the the standard diffusion process, and then we are adding a jump process as well, uh, a, 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 a compensated uh, levy levy measure. Now, uh, now the, the the this problem can still be explicitly solved, and this is the best response strategy in feedback state feedback form for player i, and this is the Riccati equation. You see the way the Riccati equation is modified because of the coupling here. The Riccati equation is this. now the 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 red term here. So alpha i is coupled with the alpha j's of the other agents. Of course, if you replace here by a summation of of the the choices of the other agents, but 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 not all of them. So you make a subset a network base. So it means that the b i of some specific guys are zero and so on, equivalently you could say that, and then you get a coupling to that your network only. So you get a distributed Riccati system. So this is like it can be easily extended to linear quadratic games in a network perfect. Now, what is the difference between open loop Nash equilibrium and closed loop flat Nash equilibrium? There is a difference, and the difference is two year. In particular, when you look at the two year. As you see, or as you check yourself, the open loop Nash equilibrium does not have this two here. So this open loop Nash equilibrium and the closed loop Nash equilibrium are different if you have a, a more than two agents, if you have two or more agents. Okay, it's true for two as well. 
right? So, uh, so uh, this is an extension. So the jump part is the part that we have included here, and uh, the part without jump and with with one agent work can be found in the in the earlier work by Professor Duncan and and co-authors. Now, now. Uh, you can prove this, and as I said, it's just the basic integration formula. But for the stochastic setup, is a tools formula with jump diffusion processes. So the first line is something that we know from it as the tools formula. The second line and the third are because of the jump terms in the tools formula. Okay. So we apply this formula, and this is the only thing that you need to find the explicit form for the cost and for the control actions, optimal control, uh, best response control actions, and the equilibrium control actions feedback form. So that's why it's powerful, because this is the same technique that you use for the verification method when you are using uh, maximum transport or, or Bellman. So the key thing is the ETHOS formula, not the method that is employed later on in terms of PDEs or, 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 or uh, coupled ODEs with boundary values and so on. So we'll use this formula and then develop our direct method. So start with the gas functional. So typically here F is alpha S square plus a linear term and plus a, a functional and dependent on state and then dependent on control. And, and then you add actually a, 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 an ETOS formula and then you identify the coefficients, do some uh, square completion here, and identify the coefficient, and then and then conclude, right? So this is a really basic direct method. You use the gas functional again. This in the risk control case, so you use the gas functional, apply it to its formula, square completion, and identification. Okay. The procedure is really very extremely simple, and that's why we believe that actually it could be used by engineers and the researchers who are new to the world so that they can understand at least why these complicated equations uh, uh, can be solved in, in many cases of interest and 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 uh, and there now we move to another introduction which is about in fact, the games and uh, uh, so here is a question I have a game with uh, infinitely many players uh, don't must ask me if this is possible but for a second let's say we have virtually infinite number of players and you want to solve this type of problems if you are in physics and thermodynamics in, in, in fluid mechanics and so on and so forth you could use a theory called many field theory there but that theory is different than many field games because here we have interact decision makers because the decision that affects is not only driven by physics law it has optimization my people are not bad up kind of optimization involved on it okay if you have hyper rationality you get optimization if you have low rationality major rationality whatever rationality level you are then you focus on a, on an intermediate level and you use learning techniques and so on so that's the big difference. Social aspect, a person deciding or a machine deciding is not necessarily the, the, the physics law that specifies how a particular, how a gas is, 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 uh, is formatted, is deviated, is moving, and is, uh, is uh, 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 evolved over time and so on. So, for the decision-making counterpart of those theory are uh, uh, now uh, widely used as the minfield uh, minfield game theory, not yet the minfield type minfield game theory. Now uh, there are of course a lot of references related to minfield game theory if before the 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 the, the, the trends we observe on minfield game. Theory. Game theory. So the one of the first main work on mean field game theory is by Jovanovic and his co-author Horizontal uh, uh, in the in the economics as well as in the 
mathematics coming in, right? And 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 it, it goes back to 82. Of course, there are other references earlier. I'm mentioning this because this reference, actually, this work does have our model, our current model of what we call minfield games. And the the the, the so the, the model is as follows. Time index here is discrete. Uh, well, you could discuss why time index is discrete here. Here we are discrete in terms of decision making time. Can I continuously decide? Can I do where, which type of systems and so on? So this is, the thing. of course, we are not saying that time is discrete. Time is always continuous. Decisions are taken in discrete time, discrete events, because we cannot measure continuously right now. Therefore, the time of decision is the most important one, and at those times we could capture your M of T and so on. So we consider the control action to be state dependent and the min field. So the min field is here state action min field means that the M1 is the min field of state and M2 may be min field of action. The joint distribution is M, right? The state moves from S to S prime according to some. Uh, uh, a model, transition kernel model, and the representative agents, there are infinite number of agents, the representative agent get this reward function. And the, the, the M moves as a classical Palmer forward equation. Now, if time were continuous, this will be actually a Macken Vlasov uh, Fokker Planck equation. And for discrete time, it's uh, all is known of the Kolmogorov equation. So the Fokker Planck is Fokker Planck Kolmogorov equation. Now the reward function is a long term reward, and here we are considering the discounted version when the betas are less than one. And if all the betas are uniform, is the standard discounted reward, and so on. So this is the mean field game, right? So this is the model that we are considering now. and. And you could see that actually there are previous work, as I said, with infinite number of agents. So this is the static mean for the games, goes back to Emil Borel again, at the, uh, the Volterra, uh, the infinite uh, populations of, 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 of genes and so on, population dynamics, the problem of Otling, where we have continuum of agents in the, in the 1929, and the, the, if you look at the book by uh, John von Neumann and Morgenstein, you will see interpretation of mixed strategies in connection with population games in the, uh, the short uh, thesis uh, by, by John Nash. So you will find their mixed strategies interpretation as a population dynamics. And that's why there is a classic population dynamics called John von Neumann Nash dynamics. And, and the work by one drop I want to highlight here briefly is about the, the, the transportation or road transportation network where you have a large number of, of, of drivers on the roads and they want to switch, they want to change the roads to minimize their expected travel time from their source to destination and so on. And uh, Continuum of Traders, model by Robert Orman, Irina Selton, and, and so on and so forth. So, so many previous work that will help us to build the dynamic version of those models. Uh, why dynamic? Well, we see that things are evolving and even in those references you have learning processes so they try to explain their static steady state concept through a dynamical equation. Like how are they going to emerge and so on. So we're gonna have to focus on the dynamic version and stuff. So it's that dynamic minfield games goes back to Jovanovic. Uh, we are not claiming here again that this is the first reference, but 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 at least it goes back to 82. And in that paper, it's already talking about minfield games with common noise and with the optimality equations, which are Bellman equation coupled with Kolmogorov forward equations and and uh, and uh, the work in the 88 generalizes Bergman separate common noise distributions and, and and so on and so forth and continuous time infill games is relatively more recent uh, because the 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 transport equation uh, in presence of noise uh, the Kolmogorov forward equation to be coupled with the focal plan equation 
the Bellman equation, that Bellman equation becomes stochastic. So people were interested in deriving why not looking at a low order, like the mean of the variance, the mean and the variance, the evolution of the mean, evolution of the variance, use Monte Carlo equation, Monte Carlo method to approximate those, and if you know those, you could focus on the variance, the reduction problems, and so on. So they were doing uh, this in their lab. The transport equation that is coupled, that is a dynamic version of the uh, monge kontorovich problem, was formulated by uh, uh, Jean-David uh, Benamou and, and Jean Vernier, and, and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, the work by uh, uh, Wang, Keynes, and Malame for the population games, uh, large regime of the population games, uh, is, and then the last three and beyond for the uh, optimality equation, the optimality system, that involve the Bellman equation coupled with the Kolmogorov forward equation for more general distributions than the, 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 the uh, low order mean variance setup and lower order, and then the quadrant equation for more general distributions that involve the Makin Vlasov dynamics instead of the one that is reduced to the uh, the control that controls the entire state trajectory. So the control, the drift, depends on the state, on the control, and on the midfield from the individual perspective before you compute the optimal control as a function of the midfield. And that's Makin Vlasov cases, and then the, the asymptotex from uh, when you increase the number of players and the conversions to the Makin Vlasov systems by Bogdan, uh, and Verish, and Lay, and Fang, and then uh, the work by Olivier uh, and then the work by uh, Gomez and his co authors, and then the work by Lee McDamine and Jean Brack, and, uh, and, and their co authors, and uh, the work by Boilan again for the minfield type control in continuous time. And then uh, the work by Peng and Coulters, and Christian Lockway and Coulters, and Eva Shtu and Coulters, Emil Ashapan and Coulters, and uh, the work by Kwon Yon Zhu, Tamar Bashar and Coulters, uh, the work by Martino Barre and Coulters, Ben Susan, Alan Ben Susan, and so on, and Coulters. Uh, uh, Kolokosov and Kotos, uh, René Calmona, François de Lauri and Kotos, uh, Young and Kotos, and, uh, and uh, Wilfred Gamble, and uh, Switch Kotos, uh, and Fiam uh, Fischer, Nani, Gino, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Borkar, and so on. So I would like to uh, acknowledge all of them for the uh, simulating and interesting discussions that are going on in this field, and of course, many recent quotes are not mentioned in this slide, and I would like, uh, I, I, act, I apologize for missing them. Uh, uh, we'll try to update some of this as time goes. And, uh, and when I say some dots, I mean, uh, it means it's continuous, okay? And uh, you can think that your name appears somewhere there and so on. So sorry for uh, this incomplete list, um, uh, but uh, it was important to go over the, the, the basics and uh, hopefully from those references you can find some others that are earlier and some others that are younger, who knows. And, and the, 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 the idea of saying who has done first, who has done second and so on is not important. The idea is the idea itself. Can we use this theory to solve concrete problems? And, and, uh, and uh, I want to summarize here briefly, okay? Indistinguishability per, per classes, uh, indistingu large number of agents and irregularity assumptions are made in all the references here. Now, uh, of course, you could extend this indistinguishability to, to 
uh, indistinguishable class and extend even beyond that a pairwise indistinguishability three four five six wise indistinguishability and so on and a large number of players well uh, for systems that are small uh, we need a theory so small uh, uh, use the idea of meaningful link game but use uh, with the finite number of agent case and then you want to know what is the error between the meaningful game solution and the final agent solution so if you are myopic or a price taker you are action taker you are dump you are signal taker you want to uh, use the meaningful game idea and uh, and look at the error if the error is small then this theory is still useful for your setup right if the error is big well you can quantify and say okay this is how much i get and so on so regularity assumptions well here i mean Measurability is one of the things, and then maybe some integration, maybe some convexity at some points, and so on. So, so at some uh, level of discussion, there, there, there is always some, some assumptions that are needed to derive something useful, right? So, we will see that for engineering applications, actually, this is a problem. Because I haven't seen a system with infinite number of decision maker in engineering community and beyond even in the economic community I didn't say it in the computer science community I didn't say it yet so can we really apply this by assuming that infinite number of agents that is a question and, uh, and uh, some of the uh, assumption on the regularity need to be dropped of course so let's move on uh, because I don't have answers to those questions uh, so introduce a simple class of meaningful games with jump diffusion classes. So the meaningful game is given by individual states that start somewhere, each individual, infinite number of agents is individual, and then the, the individual dynamics is given by a drift. The drift depends, as in the Jovanovic paper, uh, the, the, the individual state, the control action, and the distribution of state of attitude. So this will be the M1 in the one which paper. And instead of using a general uh, random process with a kernel here, I'm looking at diffusion case and then jump case. And this is what we call jump diffusion process. Now, the expected value of the cost function only to be minimized. So this is our Li and the, the the terminal payoff, the terminal loss function depends on the state and the minfield, and the running loss function depends on the state minfield to control actions in time as well. So each generic agent I does this, and they all have the same drift, same uh, diffusion coefficient, same jump uh, jump rate, and and the same terminal functional uh, and uh, terminal loss functional and same for same running loss function but inside their state might be different because it's generated according to distribution I'm not and and each player react to this you can solve using Hamiltonian or direct method and so on so but the definition was similar than the one defined similar as the one defined by your innovation 82 so what we are going to do is to solve this system and later on discuss how we can draw here, this assumption of infinite uh, a number is tricky when you try to apply it, right? So, if you are a fan of the uh, maximum principle, this is the type of equation you get. So, there is a adjoint equation, and this is, can be easily obtained from a spike variation, uh, uh, saying that there is you need a, existence of a process PQQ thing and the Q solve this and we want this to be adapted to the to the filtration generated by by the broad motion and by the by the jump process and the Kolmogorov overall equation is modified because I have added a jump term here because of the Levy process and the the the, the state dynamics involved that's one. so if you look at Bellman equation then you get a Bellman system where you have this extra term where you are integrating the value function actually over theta inside you you are at at time t you are at si but you don't know what will be the value next because you didn't evaluate it yet but need to be integrated either over theta this is this appears here it means adjoint up here here so this of course the colored version have not been 
start with in the literature now, but the equation is easy to derive and we have derived here. Now, if you drop J without jump terms, uh, then you can look at existing unique matrix implementation from the literature, the existing literature already, but with those terms, the equation is still open. And uh, we have been trying to look at particular cases, and it's particular for the uh, linear quadratic, you don't need this uh, system. You can solve and explicitly find the solution and check that they satisfy those things. So this is another way, and then, and then use that for numerical testing, because when I run my MATLAB, uh, people might say, well, you're really slow or not, and so on, but that's not a key point. The key point is that floating always a curve, and at some point, I want to know if this curve makes sense. And if I have explicit solution from another method, it will help me to compare, to say, oh, okay, my numerical method here makes sense and here it doesn't and so on, and how I can improve numerical method for big systems that should start from the basic setup where it can be checked, right? And in that sense, uh, direct method is the plausible candidate. And, and uh, that brings me to the application setup where I have uh, an evacuation problem, uh, x, uh, si dot is ui, and we are in a domain, and here is the domain, it's a building with some, let's say, uh, some obstacles inside and so on, and, and uh, the congestion measure is to look at how many people are surrounded by you, and this will be the congestion. If this number of people who are nearby, near to you here is high, and then in all the directions, then you slow down, right? Slow down means it's more costly for you to move. And, and uh, then there is a cost created by being there and so on. And the, the ranges here is from 0, 0.5 to, to, uh, to 2 meters and, uh, and, and so on. And the, the U cannot be anything. You cannot uh, move at infinite speed. So we max the maximum speed means the maximum of the norm that you could take is 0 0.8 um, meter per second uh, for pedestrian. Okay, if you are using I don't know an aircraft, it's probably different. Uh, but uh, for pedestrian and for cars, it's going to be different. So, so this is for pedestrian and. And uh, the, when you look at the best response, you get something like this. Uh, not that here counting how many other people are there is totally discontinuous object. So optimizing this becomes less trivial with the discontinuity. And uh, this is the mean field system. If you have a continuum of agents, even though for evacuation problems, the, because of occupancy of the space, this will never happen. And, and if you think that the the noise uh, appears in the speed and so on, you get this system. Although noisy, the stochastic thing where they are hitting the boundaries and so on is less plausible in terms of applications. Again, uh, what is important is to solve the system and say how far it is with the real solutions when data are noisy. So, Let's run the video. So here is 250, 200 to 250 agents, and here is another one, first floor, second floor, and uh, people are taking the, the uh, stairs on the first floor and exiting here on the ground floor, and, uh, and then you see that they are, they are all directly going to here with the same speed, uh, and then uh, they, you get a large number of uh, agents here who are queuing. So the important thing is just go straight to the exit and then queue. When there is only one exit, you just need to wait until your turn uh, arrive. Uh, but if you are more than one uh, exit, you will see that actually they'll be going to the shortest, uh, shortest, uh, not only to, not necessarily to the shortest path, but the shortest queuing time plus travel time. So that's a different uh, problem. Then if you do more and more layers, uh, then uh, actually what, will, what happens is that uh, in that case, you have a network of, uh, of, uh, of uh, flow of, uh, of mean field equations. And uh, we are interested in adding 
another noisy or or an interference I mean another disturbation that affecting the evaporation process that could be for example smoke and flame dynamics to be coupled with the focal plan equation and so on so this is the unwave work and we have applied this to uh, 163 floors for the evacuation of the Dubai Tower the Burj Khalifa and, uh, and uh, actually it's taking so it was taking longer time in the beginning, but the model was uh, I think optimized, and now evacuation time is quite 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 fast in terms of numerics. And in terms of concrete evacuation time, it's still slow. So we need to compare those and understand the behavior. So we need to import some smoke, but also response time of the users and so on and so forth. I don't want to spend time on this because this is. Uh, uh, the linear quadratics wrap uh, with the application is is postponed to other discussions uh, in, in another way. Here I focus on the uh, direct method again. So if you want the direct method can be extended to the midfield again cases and this can be found in this reference here with no PDEs, no SMDs again. Okay, This is a joint work with uh, Professor Professor Gayesh from KTH. And and we've been looking at even the extension to this sensitive the linear trolley is also there and, um, and so on so here is a basic example so linear quadratic setup where the mean of state of the other agents is m bar infinite number of other agents the individual state dynamics is here is initially you start to add uh, si0 that's square integrable and SI0 is a process that is independent on the broadened margin, the individual broad margin, and the individual jump processes. And then so so, so this is the main field game problem. We are assuming that the coefficients here are positive. Well, also, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so so what do we do with this system is we could solve with the direct method. And the solution is here. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, we could see the solution in feedback form and this is the state trajectory and so on in feedback form. So this is the minfield equilibrium. Now, how do we move to the minfield type games? And what is minfield type games? The basic setup is that actually you can include and you could improve a lot minfield games by adding the notion of risk. So if you look at carefully in the previous model, the, the individual state action decisions, uh, so SI and UI, does not affect the mean filter. And here we are saying that it might affect for people who are risk sensitive. So they will have a non negligible effect in the mean filter. And this is typically what happens for variance reduction. For you want to minimize the variance of your own state. I am one single agent. I want to reduce the variance of my state, which is follow the dynamic system. So this, in, even in one agent, you have a problem that goes beyond the problem that was developed for many games. And and why is because you affect your state. Your decisions affect your state. And therefore, it affects the mean of your state, and therefore, it affects the variance of your state. Uh, so, uh, so this uh, variance reduction problem was introduced by Markovich. Uh, and it, uh, it goes back to the 82, and we take this model in the uh, mean field type setup. And this brings me to the introduction of uh, one agent case that will be the mean field type control problems. And, uh, and this was uh, the dynamics and the convergence proof was done by Professor Bogdan, Professor Gaish, Lee and Peng. And the, the maximum principle, so how to solve this system, was first solved by Anderson and, and uh, Gaish again uh, for, for the maximum principle of SDEs of midfield type. So this is a control of Mackin Blas of equations of midfield type were especially a functional of an aggregate and this aggregate here was the expected value but it could be generalized to any uh, uh, interesting aspect because interaction form forms the old interactions that we are using in applied field are, comes in interactive form uh, aggregated form sorry 
So this happens for the interference field in wireless communication. It's happened for the flow in traffic flow theory, for example. It happens uh, for the uh, Kurno duopoly model in economics, where what is important is the supply or what is important is the price. And those comes in aggregated form, uh, aggregated form of the state or aggregated form of the control actions and so on. So this is why they considering this structure and it was generalized in Bukhtan, uh, Gage and Lee and uh, then uh, the book by Benson, Sanfrecia and Young extended to include the distribution of, of the mean field uh, state and then uh, dynamic programming papers uh, using in infinite dimension. Uh, I would discuss later on why do we need infinite dimension for this problem uh, when you move from game setup to a game, a, a game or control setup where the player influences the distribution itself. So it will be controlling not only the state but the distribution of the state. Then that's how they get to control of the distribution and so on. So of course there are many other references and especially the more recent ones that solve these problems uh, and apply them to very interesting uh, various field I would recommend you to to read uh, to read them and to see what are the recent innovation in this area in particular delays uh, quantile based and and uh, and, um, and jump divisions and so on so what does mean for type games well now we involve more than one player so you don't need the number of players to be infinite that's one thing but you don't need actually uh, uh, indistinguishability. Well, what you need is the aggregate, and the aggregate is state action. This could be just the state, it could be just the distribution of states, it could be just distribution of action, or it could be the joint distribution of state and that. The, the state changes according to a kernel, so it doesn't need to be Brownian, it doesn't need to be to be Poisson process, it's, it could be both, or it could be other processes. And the quantity of interest, as I said, could be variance, the, the you no, know, uh, the Q, the the kurtosis, the value at risk, uh, risk quantification, mean variance, and so on and so forth. So, if I have only one player and I want to reduce the variance, this is a problem of multiple type control with one player. And if I have two interacting players, for example, two connected buildings, and there is transfer of temperature from one building to another, I get a mean field, mean field, uh, mean field game problem, right? And uh, the control in one room affects the control in the other, and there are only two players. We don't have infinite number of players, right? Infinite number of decision makers. We don't have that, okay? So because there are only two controllers, and they switch on off, or yeah, uh, so the AC control. So that you don't have infinite number of ACs there. So that's why we consider this type of uh, problems. And and if you look at the structure of the problem, you get the function of state, decision, and the distribution. So this is a non von Neumann utility function. Of course, it includes the classical classical game uh, structure if you remove the DEM. Okay. So this class of games is very important. It can be seen as a generalization of the uh, main field type control problem. And the agent state and transition can now depend on the, the other agents as well. Uh, so you have interaction problems compared to the minifield type game control, minifield type control, which has one agent here, you have multiple agents involved on it. And as I said, the control of, uh, of ACs in high level of uh, 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 buildings, that is in buildings, uh, involve a lot of connecting entities and object and that we have done evacuation for for this model but we now we do also temperature control and it's so that the temperature is moved toward a cone for temperature across all the component uh, uh, but the comfort temperature might be different from one room to another because people have different desired so we we don't have necessarily indistinguishability. Indistinguishability is not needed for this problem and for the application purposes it's not distinct. Uh, it is uh, distinguishable. And uh, and uh, so 
midfield type game, as you understood, is a game where the payoff function depends not only on the state action profile but also on the distribution of it. So distribution dependent quantity of interest. Okay, variance, quantiles, kurtosis, Q, and in general risk function also. So now I'm gonna to start the direct method for uh, for mean field type games and uh, how can we extend the previous models. So the the mean field term now becomes a mean field type and it's replaced by expected value of the state here in this example. Remember that we are able to solve this problem when the expected value here was the mean field term, the average state coming from other regions. So can we solve this problem when the state here is when the mean field term is the expected value of the state? The answer is yes. Again, direct method. So the solution is explicitly given here, which is different than the main field solution. And the difference is that here you have beta, the previous was with alpha, and beta involved alpha itself. And the optimal control of main field type is different than the optimal control of the main field. Because in the main field, since you don't depend on the other, you, you can tune away this way. So the alpha was beta in the midfield, which is not the case for the midfield type. And and you might ask why midfield type and so on. Well, here we have compared the difference between the midfield and the midfield type. So the midfield trajectory is type trajectory is here. It's involved alpha and beta. Remember that alpha and beta are explicit in this solution. So this is the feedback uh, mixed strategy, uh, randomized strategy equilibrium. And the the cost function in the mean field is much much higher in terms of cost than the mean field type solution. So the mean field theory for this problem is suboptimal. And here is the price of simplicity. Why price of simplicity? Well, if you simplify the problem, saying that you don't affect the parameter of the other, the mean field term, you get this solution. If you run it with by saying that you by putting your influence on the main field you get this solution so the gap between the two so this is the the solution when you do the simplification this is the solution when you don't do the simplification so we computed in this particular case where the solution was explicitly found thanks to the direct method and we turns out that the main field solution the, main field, the game solution is suboptimal compared to the mean field type game solution right and you could see that as time goes well as the coefficient q bar goes the, the cost between the two the difference is getting really really high and this is how important is the mean field type uh, coefficients means because this q bar is next to the mean field term and uh, and uh, and you can look at of course, the price of uh, the price of anarchy as well, and as you see that the price of anarchy, what you do with the ratio is not one; it's much much higher than one, and so on. So, this is the setup, the generic mean field type game theory setup, and and it is given by multiple indexes here, so you don't have indistinguishable array. And the mean field term is the, this term here. You can write this in terms of variance reduction problem. And the state dynamics involve two mean field terms, the term here. The control mean field, this is the control mean field, this is the state mean field, and they appear in the cost functional as well as in the state dynamics. Everything is you know, quadrant. So this is what we call LQG uh, setup uh, in the mean field type context and in the book to appear, the main field type game theory book, we are solving this problem explicitly, although I will present the solution now, here. And uh, you can find uh, preliminary results in the recent uh, recent paper in, in games. So, so, uh, so the solution is similar to the previous calculations, that's why we present the previous calculation earlier, and you get the optimal control in terms of the dynamics of S bar, which can be obtained by running this. 
where alpha, beta, gamma, and delta will be presented in the next slides. And uh, to obtain these results, we, we don't need that many things. We need to assume that the initial uh, state dissipation is square integrable. The coefficients are positive, as I said. So this assumption in particular is much, much uh, weaker than the assumption that says that all the coefficients here are about to be positive. So, so this is an improvement of the assumption compared to the literature. And uh, the coefficients of the Riccati systems of equation with the, with the jump term involved on it for delta and the rest are this coupling feedback Nash solutions and the common noise, when you can add the common noise, that is observed common noise, then you get the conditional term here and the solution can be obtained as well and uh, but now the, the becomes stochastic so s bar becomes s hat and this is driven by the common noise each time there is a common noise the mean is shifted and shifted back and shifted to some other directions and so on and the conditional solve of course uh, this is uh, this common noise is independent to the individual problem motion and the, the the jump process so it's uh, obtained directly from the state dynamics uh, by taking the conditional expectation but one important thing is that the stochastic systems becomes now a deterministic system uh, the, the, in the previous equation that becomes now a stochastic system in presence of common noise and this regularizes the system you get uh, that more more uh, smooth so for example when there is a blow up in the first system and you add a common noise you get sometimes some well-defined object so it makes sense to consider this type of regularization technique and uh, we found all the solution without Bellman principle without Pondriagin principle without couple PBEs without couple backward forward uh, uh, SMPs and so on so this is why we thought it's interesting so instead of game problem we can look at the game problem but now with cooperation so one single agent can control all the can compute all the control of all the players and give them a common objective uh, for example the social welfare the sum of the cost functions and uh, this is the global optimization or the team problem and the solution can be found and with less so the, with less number of uh, system parameters and so on and the variance reduction problem as we see the solution is there this is zero okay if you start with deterministic objectives is zero so you focus only on the last two terms here three terms here and the control action depends not only on the uh, state uh, and time but uh, also on the on the on the mean field here is the mean field is s hat which is the conditional mean field conditional with respect to the the common noise and this is the alpha node beta node gamma node and delta node those are stochastic Riccati systems for the team problem and similar observations as well so so we then focus on the bargaining problem and there the solution is actually similar but now you need to find the trade point which is obtained from the Nash Nash non-cooperative solution because when they don't reach an agreement then you have to choose that, something that they could guarantee but in the LQG you cannot really guarantee something if the other get try to destroy you so then we pick the Nash equilibrium as the trade point you want to be below the Nash equilibrium I mean below uh, better than the Nash equilibrium solution and then you can consider this set up your weights and then plug that those weights here and then compute the global optimization solution and this gives you the Nash bargaining solution why can we do this well we are assuming that the choice space here is convex and the of course the, the loss function on its quadratic so it is convex and so on so the Nash bargaining solution is explicitly given here with the appropriate Riccati equations that are stochastic and so on so we need the, the weights will be the bargaining power now you are interested in the robust optimization case where the problem is that we consider two players and they are one is minimizing the other is maximizing and then what you get is that actually if each of them is doing the 
in the conditional expectation with respect to the common noise, you can find a, an explicit solution uh, to this problem, which is a robust optimization or min-max formulation, and uh, a, a solution similar to this, but for min field game, not min field type game, can be found in this uh, reference here, a joint work by Professor Bauzo and Professor Bashar, and uh, this is the min field type solution differs from those min field game solutions because the min field is not frozen here, and the explicit solution, as you could see, and presence of common noise is given here for player one and this is for player two and this is the control action what is important is that the control action depends on the control the conditional min field this is the key thing here and uh, the Riccati equation does uh, for the MCP the robust and so on solve the systems here and uh, no back or forward PD that again so uh, so now I briefly discussed the empathy structure. In the previous ones, either we have global optimization or individual optimization. Here I consider for each person I a set of agents who he cares, he or she cares. So if you are I and the list of your friends, the people you care of, are and I, then I consider them with a certain weights. Right. Lambda I is how much you care about yourself. Lambda I J, J different and I is how much you care to J. And of course you could sum to all the indexes and say that if you don't care, set up to zero and so on. But the important thing is to say that it depends on I. So uh, so the if we consider this one half neighborhood, we get other regarding payoffs, so other regarding cost functional. And consider the denote this by Li lambda. <coughs> you can run the the interpretation is this: if L lambda I is positive, then you care about yourself, and if lambda I is positive but all the lambda I just are zero, you are purely selfish because you don't look at other agents uh, objectives. If lambda I j is positive. Uh, then, uh, so this term to be positive, then you care about j, so you are partially altruistic. If lambda ij is negative, then uh, you are partially spiteful against this j. So you are spiteful against j's, that's why you are partially spiteful, because I don't talk about other j's, uh, j prime than j, so you are partially spiteful. If your lambda i is zero, then you don't care about yourself, so you are selfless. If uh, lambda i is zero, you are partially selfish because you care about yourself a bit. If your coefficient is negative, um, then you are self abnegating because you are trying to destroy yourself at least partially. So, so this this simple parameterization help us to study not only non-cooperative solution but also altruistic behavior, cooperative behavior and and spitefulness like maliciousness in the system so it's therefore this is important for security issues uh, and other formulations as well so this class of problems capture a wide and broader ranges of problems and let's look at for the LQ case so now I'm adding this alpha IJs everywhere and the states Dynamic states as before jump diffusion processes with common noise. Well, we can find explicitly the solution to this problem. And the solution is given here, where you see that the weights appear and i and j's weight appear otherwise, but in the coefficients. The Riccati equation will be modified a bit. As you can see here, this is the modification in the Riccati equations, and uh, you can you can check that actually. Uh, you can, if you move from the altruistic to the selfish, you could find back the selfish behavior. And uh, this is really important that it captures not only selfish, but also partially altruistic phenomena and so on. So this is for gamma and delta. And uh, so let me summarize what we have seen so far. Direct method is essential, in particular for numerics. It provides semi-explicit solutions it is a simple formula because it's just integration formula 
and in the stochastic case, this Tito's formula. And I think this formula is really useful and easy understood so far from the feedback that we are getting by new recent researchers and as well as engineers who are beginners to the field year. And uh, this will be hopefully useful for users who will try to apply the variance reduction problems, the risk, uh, risk minimization problems in emerging markets uh, such as blockchain and so on. Now, let me briefly introduce the rhythm switching because it's also useful in our terms of applications. Now, uh, the, the remember that before the coefficients, alpha uh, A of T, uh, was dependent on time, so it could be now indexed by the, the switching regime. So for different regime, I may have different dynamics, and you switch from one regime to another, but you might add also a switching component as a process as well. So this is the empty here, and you switch between one to as finite number of uh, switching regime to simplify the analysis here. So, and the, the L here is quadratic as usual, but the coefficient, what is important is that the coefficient are now random. Can we find a solution? Yes, the solution is given explicitly, semi-explicitly here, and there is the switching term that appears, switching term that appears in, in both equations, and there is a, there is a, uh, there, 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 there is a integration formula for for the jump term. So this is the jump term here, this is the diffusion term, and this is the switching term. Uh, switching in the alpha and switching in the delta. So this explicit solution is allow us to solve systems that that are with the region switching and with jump diffusion processes. So this explanation was useful and uh, you could do optimization, weighted optimization instead of the region switching to, to find in particular Nash bargaining solution because the non-cooperative solution sometimes is not as good as expected. So the bargaining solution, the negotiation solution might, might fit in some problems and with the regime switching. And we have done that and this is the negotiation solution explicitly, semi-explicitly provided here. Now, as I said, this method can be used as a verification validation procedure as, uh, as well as from numerical point of view because the explicit solution help you to derive a, an approximate reference trajectory so that if your numerics doesn't look like that then you need to optimize your numerics because uh, because it's not giving the, the solution and so on. So it should work first for this setup where the solution is explicit and then deviate a bit approximations of those and see if the numerics how far it goes beyond non non quadratic uh, setup we have applied the methodology to the ross uh, ross uh, 1925 paper that is about competition between firms so the reward is Conditional price, price is here, the price dynamic, conditional price times quantity. So this is your your total gain, right? How much you are selling, uh, the quantity, and uh, how much at, at how much uh, uh, unit price, right? So uh, so unit price times quantity, that's the, your gain, and minus production cost. And there is, if at time T1, uh, it doesn't make sense to, to have anything left, that's a negative part of it. So you want to maximize this functional here, uh, but S is given by this trajectory, S hat is the conditional version, so that this is this problem is a mean field type problem, because here you get a conditional variance, mean field type problem, mean field type conditional variance reduction problem, and we have used the direct method to solve it explicitly recently. We have solved it as explicitly. So the Ross model is this model without the color of the part here, which is a jump diffusion with common mass that we have added to his model, this existing model, to make it variance reduction term uh, for the wasted part of the of, uh, of the problem, because uh, after time, terminal time, the everything that was is considered as a waste here. Yeah. Okay, so semi-explicit uh, solution again to this problem. And 
And you could see that variance reduction is actually a very important problem in the literature, as particular in the recent application of blockchain, one of the popular application was, or still is, blockchain based on uh, Bitcoin's, uh, Bitcoin's application of, of blockchain. So the price went from, uh, in this example, uh, beginning of December 2000, 2018, so it's 2017, sorry, it started from uh, below 1, 000, 1, uh, 10,000 to uh, uh, 20,000 and then back to 7,000. So within few couple of weeks. So then the, if you look at the variation from this to that, it's huge. And we want to, so authorities have, in many countries want uh, that actually this type of quick variation in this large window might not be appropriated with the sensitivity of the users because, because some people are actually some people who are buying at this level and end up here, there is a big loss, right? And whenever there is a big loss, even with small probability, whenever there is a big loss, there is a notion of risk. And so one proposal is to regulate the, the, the market and then you can do, you can choose your level, a lower price and higher price, the difference is smaller, but then what you could do is to stay between those prices, the difference to be smaller. This difference here is monster. So it's like three times the minimum price where they started. So that's not acceptable. You want something that says, okay, 2%, uh, just above the rates of the uh, standard market. So that big enough so that it attracts a lot of customers, but not, not that big. So what is important is actually not the difference between the price, is this the fluctuations, because that allows us to do volumes of transactions, a big volume of transactions. So the previous one is considered as a unstable price, and here is a stable one, well stable. And, and so still with a high volume of transactions that stays between 009 and 08 for a corresponding period, uh, this is a Tether, USD, and, and so on. So it's just an example. It doesn't promote any cryptocurrency here. It, what it says is that if you want stable price, can you have big volumes of transaction? The answer is yes, you can. And, and, uh, and how can you regulate the price? Well, you choose your frequency, means the range. The gap between the two should, be, should not exceed uh, a certain percentage of, uh, of, of uh, the, the, the smallest uh, price. And to construct such a function is pretty easy. Um, uh, you can just put a constant that is here. But constant price is not interesting because it doesn't attract people. Right? People are investing because price is changing. I want to invest when it is low so that when it's high I sell it, I earn something. Uh, if it stays the same, uh, well, I'm looking for security. It means that the other markets are unstable. Okay, so so we want a stable one means stable but with a zigzag. So zigzag means what? Fluctuations allow you transactions. So this type of zigzag can be captured through 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 sine or cosine type of thing. And here is a, an example. So this oscillates between zero nine nine and one zero one. And uh, and uh, and uh, it looks like there are so many fluctuations, so opportunities for transactions up and down, and, and so on. And uh, for any upper and lower, you can construct such a function in this category. And, uh, and the price dynamics, of course, is not a regulated price. The market price depends on demand, depends on supply, and uh, and uh, you can inject the supply of tokens or supply of altcoins so that the market price is influenced to stay in that boundary. And uh, variance, so here appears the connection with meaningful type game theory. There is a variance of this price appears and then you want to reduce that variance. So this is cumulative variance uh, on the running cost is here and the terminal cost is here. If you take these two and couple them together, you get a meaningful type games for the blockchain based cryptocurrencies. And the explicit solution again is given by our framework here using a direct method. Doesn't need infinite dimensional PDEs to find this problem. Doesn't need back or forward uh, 
uh, set up to find this problem. It's quickly done, it is explicit, and, and uh, you get the optimal supply to be injected on the market to stay between the regulated boundaries. And this is an example of real market data coupled with our proposal. As you can see, the variance has been significantly reduced. Volume of transaction is still high because there are so many, so many opportunities for, for doing transactions uh, because of the fluctuations that are happening. So this is the log price and the below one is the uh, market price. A simulated one in the red dot and the real data price from the, the earlier uh, versions and we we could uh, we could uh, do this for any price dynamics that has uh, the form that I've given in the previous slide. Of course, there are other applications of the framework. We have been applying it to network security with, with uh, the variance problems, and the the network can be the security can be seen as a public good because when you get security, it's good for everyone, including for data types. <laughs> and uh, and uh, when security is extremely high, then you can, nobody can do anything because because it's completely strong aspects you couldn't move at all. So that's very bad when S is extremely high. But we choose a small epsilon such that if S is a saturation at one over E, and uh, and uh, the explicit solution again for this problem can be found uh, because of the structure that is given here, and that could serve as an application. So, uh, part uh, this ends my talk on the on the on the direct method. Briefly, if you want to use the Bellman approach in infinite dimension to find a state feedback, state min field and common noise feedback given the starting points and so on that are FTSB not measurable, then you you can use your infinite dimensional PDE. The the, the 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 initial starting point with switching is this one, and then the the um, Foucault Planck uh, Kolmogorov equation becomes this with a jump term and a switching term. This star means they're adjoint. The PDE is a stochastic PDE uh, with the with the, with the switching regimes uh, because they are high in here in B I. And the stochastic because B not the common noise appears here, and the terminal at time t is given by this expression here, and the Hamiltonian involve the integration formula, the jump term. This is because of the switch term. This is because of the diffusion term, and this is because of the drift term, and so on. And this is because of the running cost. And uh, and uh, if you derive this v, the big v hat. You are here we are differentiating with respect to the measure here uh, and then differentiating with respect to S twice. So this type of problem, if you do that, the differentiating with respect to the measure of V hat, then you get a master system instead of the master equation that is popular in the in field game. From here you get master systems of equations because of the common noise involving those. And, and uh, if there is no common noise, the equation is reduced to a simpler uh, setup where the Hamiltonian becomes this, so that they become uh, deterministic infinite dimensional PDEs. And if you want to do uh, maximum principle or contracting approach instead of the Bellman, you can look at open loop solutions and solve the backward forward problem. And the uh, connection between the two approaches actually can be made by the adjoint by setting up the adjoint processes to be as uh, the derivative with respect to S and M of the V hat. So uh, this should be hat V hat expression. And the conditional state dynamics solve these uh, SDE stochastic differential equations. And then you the P you get from here is not necessarily measurable. You need to condition with respect to the filtration generated by the initial process and the, the common noise and then plug it back in the, in the control laws. And uh, this is the part that we didn't do because the direct methods provide you more efficiently, more accurately because it's explicit and, and, uh, and, and it's very quick. And just run this uh, 1D in the one-dimensional analysis. So it's a very uh, simple and easy setup. 
So that being said, let's conclude my presentation. Your feedback are more than welcome. And in the next couple of weeks, I would like to improve those and include uh, non-linearity in particular in the state dynamics so that other uh, solutions can be also solved directly without PDEs, without backward for our systems. And uh, this will allow, hopefully, engineers to solve these type of problems. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, I will be waiting for your feedback. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.